In this video, I'm bringing you a practical course to create stunning, hyper-realistic, cinematic AI photos using ultimate prompt structure on Mid-Journey and how to bring your Mid-Journey creations to life using the new frontier of cinematic storytelling, OneWay Gen 2. I will show you the full workflow to create a cinematic trailer with consistent characters using face swap method step by step. This includes upscaling your Mid-Journey images using Topaz Gigapixel AI, creating videos from your images with Runway Gen 2, and the optimal settings for upscaling Runway videos to 4K using Topaz Video AI. I will also show you how to use new motion setting and camera controls in Runway as well as free alternatives for these tools. Let's start with ultimate hyper-realistic photography and cinematic prompt structures. There are many different ways to approach the creation of an AI-generated image and prompting. Atomic prompting is one of the methodologies for organizing a prompt that helps make the life of creators easier and their workflows much more efficient. Atomic prompting is inspired by nature. With that, we will organize components of our prompt according to four layers, organism, molecules, atoms and parameters which together builds the image. It's a simplified and structured approach to prompting. Organism level is the, the most foundational decisions we need to take for an AI image generation. Here we will decide on the art direction we will take and describe the scene in the simplest way possible. Do we want more realism or more painting style? Who is subject and what is the action in the scene? Photography type is critical to notify mid-journey for our desired creative direction and its first ever decision we need to take. For example, do we want to have a street or architecture photography? Do we want to have a fashion photoshoot or product photography? What if we want to create cinematic AI photography? This element is one of the most important parts of our prompt structure. After that, we are describing our photo and finding answers for who is the subject in photo? What are they doing? You don't have to answer all these questions, but I recommend to include these critical details to maximize your creative control on the final outcome. And we know from my early prompt studies that Mid-Journey gives it most high ranking to tokens mentioned early in the prompt. That's why these elements are in the organism layer. When we break down elements in the organism layer, we are reaching to molecular layer represented by yellow color code and there about secondary details of subject. What is their location and what's their outfit look like? In which year our subjects are living? Here we have also camera controls, camera name and photographer style. It's highly valuable to describe shot type in the prompt. Look how vibe and emotion changes when we apply different camera angles to the same subject. After this, we are going to the atomic level where we start breaking down molecular level elements to further details. For example, details of fashion and outfit, description of background and more. Atomic level can be considered as advanced prompting and it's not necessary for everyone unless you really want to control every detail in your image. For majority of people, organism and molecular level will be more than enough. Last decision we need to take is deciding on right parameters for our image. For example, if we want to apply default mid-journey aesthetics to our photo and if yes how strongly. I made videos about this before so you can refresh your memory if you want to understand stylized parameter better. You can also use new weird parameter together with stylized to create really unique looking unconventional images. Just keep in mind to use same value for both parameters for balanced results. If you don't want to apply default mid-journey aesthetics which includes an artsy touch then just add style raw parameter to your prompt. It's safe to say that style raw defaults to photorealism slightly better than stylized and notice how style raw pays attention to the original prompt more closely. And people follow me for a long time knows that I'm not the biggest fan of combining style raw with stylized elements since I believe they have different purposes. But I don't want to limit your creativity so go try to combine them if you prefer a mixed style. Having said that, in the prompts which includes historical costumes or generally in fashion photography mixing up stylized with raw makes significant impact. I think this is due to the training data for Mid-Journey's default aesthetic style is being heavily influenced by fashion photos. Then finalize your prompt with your desired aspect ratio. When it comes to creating cinematic images, only thing you need to do is adding word cinematic to transform your prompt. The keyword cinematic is important as it prompts Mid-Journey to interpret the image as a cinematic photo taken from an actual movie scene. In the molecular level we are using a combination of shot types, camera names with cinematic features, filmmakers with unique art style, and we are setting the tone with year, emotion and lighting. Together these will provide amazing value if you have something specific in mind. For cinematic prompts, we have costume and set design in the atomic level. We don't have to go that deep unless we really want to control every detail in our image. If you want to keep things simple, just use the organism level together with minimum amount of parameters for a simple but effective, cinematic looking image. If you prefer to create your own cinematic universe, use this prompt. 
As an example, I created the movie from an alternate universe where Batman vs Joker was a Bollywood movie from India. I recommend using the style raw parameter to fully leverage the visual style elements we incorporate in the prompt, especially if you mention a camera name or director's name with a unique style. This will exclude standard mid-journey style elements and make the algorithm truly focus on your style keywords. Since we learned how to create ultra-realistic cinematic AI photos with mid-journey, let's apply everything we learned in practice and bring our images to life to create a cinematic trailer. In my trailer, I also wanted to create consistent characters which appears throughout the trailer not just random people. I will use combination of tools to bring those images to life, and some of them are actually paid tools but I will give you budget alternatives to achieve similar results for some of the tools without spending too much money. First we will decide on what kind of AI film we want to create. It's required to have some type of direction to start building our world. I was interested in the mystery of mass sighting of sky events that occurred in the sky in Fatima, Portugal in 1917. This is based on true events that happened in Portugal, with hundreds of people witnessing a glowing orb moving fast in the sky and people were shocked by it. Now I will create a fictional film synopsis about this story, create characters and start building my universe using ChatGPT and Midjourney. I use this prompt. Here is the piece ChatGPT wrote. Now let's continue with creating our cinematic universe. Here we will use Midjourney and also use ChatGPT as prompt assistant. I will use this prompt for ChatGPT to help me create my trailer. It creates the trailer for me scene by scene with opening shot, introduction of the main and secondary characters, conflict, tension, climax and more. This is helpful but somehow I need to translate this to a visual language of atomic prompting Midjourney can understand. For this job I'm using this prompt. Then ChatGPT translates my trailer scenes to a table with visual language that Midjourney can understand. Once I have the table I will use ChatGPT as prompt assistant to build my mid-journey prompts based on elements on the table. Here are the mid-journey prompts created by ChatGPT for visuals of my trailer. Now I will go ahead and copy and paste these prompts to mid-journey to generate scenes for my trailer. You can of course adapt and change them a bit. Character names don't mean anything for mid-journey so instead of that you can describe your character's physical features. We will change our character's face in the next step for consistency. Additional to that I will probably need more shots of landscape, people and architecture of Fatima, Portugal. There is a quick way to build your cinematic world in mid-journey. Use this prompt. This prompt will bring all the necessary elements for my trailer and combining it with the chaos parameter will ensure that I have all of these elements in my grid. Then, I can upscale one of these elements, let's say landscape, and then use strong variation feature of mid-journey to create different landscape shots for the same town with same team. For my trailer I need to create my characters, Beatrice and Dr. Harrison and use their faces consistently throughout the different scenes in my trailer. I saw some people use following prompt structure in combination with in-painting for character consistency. This prompt creates a grid view with multiple angle shots of the same character. You can also use strong variation button for more similar shots. Use vary region button for in-painting mode and select extension of one of the images in the grid. While selecting be sure you include a tiny part of your original image and change prompt to your desired pose or scene. And here is the result. I think this method is great for illustrative, drawing style of characters. For realistic images, I found this method to be less flexible. I will show you a more flexible method called face swapping. First we will start by designing our main protagonist, using this prompt. When you're satisfied with the look of your character, upscale it. For creating consistency we will use face swapper add-on for Discord. Face swapper is a cool bot on Discord allows you to add any face to your mid-journey generations. To install this add-on you need to create your own Discord server which is free and really simple. Once you create your server, go the link in description and install inside face swap bot to your Discord server. After accepting invite and adding this bot to your server you need to also add mid-journey bot. I designed Beatrice's face using mid-journey and now I need to save it to face swap bot. In order to do that, go to your server and type slash save id. This command will need a name for your character and you will need to upload her photo here so later we can use it in our new generations. After hitting enter, I can start generating new scenes for Beatrice. In this scene, for example, Beatrice is in train station and her face looks like someone else. To fix this, I will right click on my image, head over to apps and click on in swapper. Remember, this bot will copy paste last face you saved to the new scene you created. And here my character's face is placed in new body posture for another scene. This method is much easier to create lot of scenes with consistent looking characters. We can change our character's face expression as well. To do that click on vary region button to switch to in painting mode. 
Pick lasso tool and select your character's face. Add emotion or face expression to the prompt. When you hit enter, Mid Journey will generate same character with a different emotional state. Once you upscale one of them, apply face swapper again and create consistent looking character images with different emotions. Here we made her very happy. Additional to face swapping, in painting comes quite handy for consistent character creation. For example, we can inject our character's face directly to the scenes. To do that, upload your character's face to Discord, right click and get the link to the image. Now create your scene that you want your character to be. After upscaling, click on Vary, Region and select the face of your subject. Now we need to change the face. Come to the prompt section and copy paste link to your original character's face. With that we created an image prompt together with text. Hit arrow. Your original character design is injected to the new scene. Since we have our scenes with consistent characters created we can upscale those images. Unfortunately, Mid Journey Upscaler alone isn't enough for us. To truly bring out the details and make our images pop, we need another tool. Topaz Gigapixel AI is my go-to upscaler. Although it's a paid tool, the results are worth the investment. One of the standout features of Topaz Gigapixel AI is its ability to upscale images in bulk swiftly. This is especially handy when you have a series of images that need to be enhanced. Getting started is simple. Install and open Topaz Gigapixel AI. Once you've got the app installed on your Mac, launch it. Add your images. You can drag and drop entire folders, individual images, or use the browse option to locate and select your images. On the right menu, you'll find an option to set the upscale ratio. I personally prefer to upscale to 4x. Choosing the AI model, there are various AI models available. From my experience, the standard model gives the best results. However, if you're unsure, the app has an auto mode which selects the optimal model for your image. For settings like suppress noise, remove blur, and compression, I usually leave them in auto mode. This way, Topaz's AI can make the best decision for the image. Mid Journey is already quite good at handling faces, so I don't usually enable face recovery or gamma correction. However, if I'm working with a scene that has multiple faces, especially in a crowd, I might turn on the face recovery option. Once you're satisfied with your settings, click on save image. If you've added multiple images, Topaz Gigapixel AI will upscale all of them in bulk. We created our images using Mid Journey and upscaled them. Now it's time to create our video footages for the cinematic trailer using Runway Gen 2 and upscale these videos using Topaz Video AI. Runway is a versatile tool with both free and paid versions. The free version does come with a watermark, but it's a great way to test the waters. If you're on a budget, consider using Picolabs on Discord as an alternative to Runway and CapCut Video Upscaler as an alternative to Topaz Video AI. You can create your video footage from a single image or you can also type a prompt in addition to the image you uploaded, giving more context to Runway. You can drag and drop your mid-journey images or click on upload a file. Once you've uploaded your image, you'll need to adjust settings. If you're using a free account, some options might be restricted. Both Runway and Topaz Video AI have interpolation option. I recommend to check Runway's interpolation. This means smooth transition between frames using a machine learning algorithm. I tested interpolation of Topaz Video AI against Runway's and realized for faces Runway interpolation does a better job. However, if you have no visible faces in the scene, Topaz Video AI brings great fluidity to scene. I recommend to uncheck Runway Upscaler because it's pretty slow. We can use external tools like Topaz Video AI for this job. Runway recently added new settings called Motion. Motion allows you to set intensity of fluidity in your video. Higher values result in more motion. Default value is 5. Custom camera controls are the latest feature from Runway. It allows you to set the motion of camera. You can choose to pan horizontally or vertically. You can zoom out or zoom into your subject. One of the advantages of Runway is its ability to generate multiple videos simultaneously. This allows you to produce several videos and select the best one instead of waiting for hours. Initially, videos will be 4 seconds long, but you can extend them up to 18 seconds. I observed shots from behind tend to maintain coherence much better. Now let's export our Runway Gen 2 videos to Topaz Video AI for upscaling using plus button here. I will show you my choice of settings on Topaz Video AI one by one. Let's start from the top. I want to upscale this video to high resolution so I will choose 4x here and I keep here as 24 frames per second. We don't need AI stabilization because movement is actually an element increasing realism and it's something we want to have. We also don't need AI motion debler. Frame interpolation is optional. If you already use runway interpolation in your video then you don't need top pass interpolation. 
For enhancement, let's set the video type to progressive. And for AI model, I will pick Proteus. We don't need any extra grain or noise in the image. Down below, we have some encoder presets. I like to choose ProRes and as codec I will choose 422HQ. Hit export. With these settings you will get much better resolution for your videos. Take a look at video outputs. Adding voices of our characters to the trailer brings them to life. For this job I will use 11 labs. First I need to choose right voices for my characters. 11 labs allows you to sample voices so you can find the best possible option. If you click on speech synthesis, you will find some pre-selected voice options. If you go to voice library you can find even more options and filter depending on age gender, accent etc. for my trailer, I need few sentences to be voice over so I can use them between my scenes in the trailer. I decided that voice named Charlotte fits best to my main character Beatrice. I am copy pasting lines chat GPT created. I am hitting generate. For music, I used epidemic sound because I already had a count there. But you can use Pixabay for free stock music. To bring everything together I use CapCut desktop version. CapCut's desktop version is much more capable and intuitive than web version. Here you can upload all the runway videos you created and upscaled using import button. Then when you hover over the file, you will see a plus button. This will allow you to quickly add the video footage to your timeline. Also you can add text, effects, transitions, automatic captions, stickers and more. If you want to apply color correction for visual consistency between your clips, click on the footage, head over to adjustments on the video details window, scroll down adjustments and you will see detailed color and light related settings for cinematic look. Another important detail you may need is to decrease or increase music levels depending on the scene. For this job, head over to your music file in the timeline. On the corner of the media details window, you will find this square button called add keyframe. This button allows you to add keyframes to your music so you can adjust volume level scene by scene. Their mobile app has a feature called 3D zoom. You can upload some of your mid-journey images and create this cool parallax effect. Now, let me show you the final trailer. A light in the sky of a kind I had never seen before. I'm investigating miracles around the world. Something happened there that day in Fatima. Vatican wants me to find the truth. They want to keep people in dark and dumb so they would never know the truth. A group within the government doesn't want this to be known. Portuguese government is worried about implications of this event. You need to be careful. You expect me to believe in miracles? I'm a scientist and I need to stay in the boundaries of science. I need a proof, Beatrice, a scientific evidence. I will solve this with or without your help, Professor. I owe this to people of Fatima. Subconscious is like a recording of everything that has happened in your lifetime in the background. We need a way to unlock those memories if we want to solve this puzzle. I believe these people. We can solve this together. I believe everyone can create art. That's why I'm creating these high quality mid journey courses for free so everyone can watch and learn without paying hundreds of dollars. Hopefully this video was truly helpful for you. If so give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more awesome tutorials. If you want to learn more about creating AI photos, videos and everything AI related click here.